The resin infusion process is similar to the resin transfer process. However, the high level of vacuum required for this technique makes the difference. Okay. What we'll do is loading this part up with a, a reinforcement that acts as a, a transfer medium. This has a 300 gram either side with a spongy center to it. So that's as a, an infusion uh, medium to let resin flow through the the job. A light resin coat is sprayed before placing the reinforcements in the mould cavity. The reinforcement, consisting of carefully tailored woven roving, cloth and or mat, is laid in position dry onto the mould. In this case, it is placed on a gel coated mould. This is a reusable, reusable silicon bag, it's high elongation, so it's, it's, it's flat, so it's placed over the, the part, then with a zipper seal, three channels in there, they're placed together, so you're going to place this over the, the part, and it's just to be lined up, stuck this end there, yeah, After sealing, a vacuum is introduced so that the flexible mould takes the desired shape. Liquid resin is injected or drawn into a mould which contains the fibres through one or more ports. What we're going to do is introduce resin now. This is a modified polyester resin that has a lower viscosity. Uh, laminating resins have a centre poise of say around 6 to 800 range, where this on a typical infusion resin would be anywhere between 150 to 200 centre poise. This particular resin is 220 centre poise. So as I said with that initial introduction, it's starting to spread out now. The rate of flow of the resin into the mould is important to get a proper wet out before the resin gels. The temperature, viscosity and the type of resin play an important part in this. Right, following on from, from the infusion process, we've got the part and now we have to demould it. Um, to demould it, we have to put a series of wedges around the flange, around about 100 mil apart or so, and then just evenly start feeding the wedges in under the flange, taking care not to go between the laminate. And then, as you can hear, she's starting to come away as we go around, and the part's starting to come off. The last few wedges, and we sink, we're releasing. So just put a bit more pressure under, and then the part comes away. And there you can see the nice gel coated surface and a, a real good weight with the infusion process, around about 40% of resin content. And there we have the part ready for trimming. And completed. The advantage of the process is that the reinforcement is precisely located, the resin content can be accurately controlled and an excellent finish may be obtained on all surfaces. Here we see a resin infusion process done on a flat shaped component using a non-porous sheet with the surface sealed using a sealing tape. In this particular case in addition to fibre reinforcement consisting of chop strand mat and a triax mat, a porous core material is also used. Once the materials are placed in position and covered with the sheet and sealed, the vacuum is drawn between the moulding plate and the cover membrane with controlled pressure. 
Upon achieving proper vacuum, resin is supplied to the infusion system, drawn in by the vacuum. It is critical to ensure the resin moves evenly through the reinforcement, displacing air as it does so. Resin movement should be even to prevent pockets of dry glass. Any vacuum leaks should be corrected. A high level of vacuum is necessary and should be maintained for a long period of time. The resin is allowed to totally infuse the reinforcement. Resin supply is then shut off but the vacuum is maintained until the resin has cured. One of the advantages of the resin infusion process is the accurate placement of all reinforcing and core material. It is an enclosed system so that no escape of volatiles to atmosphere is encountered. A high reinforcement to resin ratio is achievable with reduced labour input. However, it needs resins with longer gel time and there is risk of air voids if the resin path is not correct, which may result in scrapping the total part.